Hey guys, what's up? In today's video, I'm demoing you how you could use VirtualBox to configure a shared folder between the host machine and the VM. In this case, my host machine is Windows 10. The VM is Ubuntu 19, the server edition. So there's no GUI. Um, and I'm going to show you how you can configure the shared folder and be able to share files between the Windows machine and Linux. And maybe if you want to, you know, share a config file inside Windows, make changes, copy it over. If you don't like working in a Linux environment, if you like me, I don't like making a lot of command line changes. Uh, so instead I would prefer to just put the stuff in Windows, open my notepad, make changes, copy it over back. Um, so that's what we're doing today. Um, and if you have not watched our previous video on installing Ubuntu completely from ISO, you could go back and watch that. Um, you know, that shows you how, how you could create the VM in using VirtualBox and also install Ubuntu 19 uh, server from start to, to finish. So that's what's coming up. Hey guys, thanks for joining. My name is Michael Paltan and I'm the founder of Zoom Admin. In this channel, we do a lot of demo videos on Zoom Admin, on different functionality, on different technologies, including VMs, hosting, uh, software, you know, programming, all kinds of things. Is If this is the first time joining, uh, click on that subscribe button or the like button if you like the video and uh, there's a lot more videos to come up. So in today's video, I'm showing you how you can share folders uh, between the host machine, in this case it's a Windows machine, uh, inside into your Ubuntu VM. So let's let's get started. So from the last time, um, we left off a fresh install of Ubuntu Server VM inside our virtual box. As you can see, I, we also took a snapshot. And again, if you haven't watched that video, I'll have a link below. Go go watch that first. Uh, I, I again I take you step by step through the process of installing um, Ubuntu server from ISO file. So first thing we need to do is actually create the shared folder. So as we, as you recall, we saved our VM inside CVM, CVM one, and we're just gonna create a new folder here called shared. And just so we can test something, I'm gonna create a new file here, call it um, test. And we are also going to put some text in here. Okay, and save it. So once we create this, created this shared folder, the second thing we need to do is now... So next we need to go into VM settings. Again, make sure it's turned off, powered off. All right, go into settings and then shared folders. And then we're going to add a new shared folder. And just uh, copy paste the, the, the path to your shared folder. It's going to also name the shared um, folder, I mean, the, the, your shared to, um, in this case, shared, coming off of the table, uh, the folder name. You could change this if you like, but I'm going to leave it the same. The other thing I want to do is just click on other mount, and I'm going to call it the same thing in, in uh, Ubuntu, in, in Linux. Again, what this does, it's gonna auto mount, automatically mount this folder inside your Linux VM with this um, partition uh, slash slash forward slash uh, shared. That's pretty much all you need to do now. And click on OK, OK again, and let's start the VM. Okay. And uh, we need to install uh, a small package before this will this will work for us. And um, that's a that's a package uh, inside the APT package manager. And I'll show you once this comes up. Uh, but in other videos, you might see people showing you to insert guest edition CD, all that stuff. We don't need to do any of that if you're using Ubuntu. There's actually a package. You, that you can install, uh, it just makes it work. So we're gonna log in as, as root. Um, and, it, uh, and the package we wanna install is, uh, so you do apt get minus y install. Uh, the package name is virtual box guest utils, okay? And hit enter. 
it's gonna install that package should be pretty quick okay so now if you do df you should see that shared uh, partition here as you can see it's the last one you can even now see the into the shared uh, partition and do ls you should see our test file see that's that's pretty cool this is this is kind of amazing i don't know going from windows into uh, linux so now if you do uh, cut to uh, test.txt to see the contents you'll see that it's it, it's test test that's what we actually saved and i'm, I'm gonna do one more test actually two tests one changing this in, inside linux so if you do um, I don't know uh, test.txt and come here update it from from Linux okay and then uh, save it which is just control s and then control x to exit okay now if you go back to your Windows machine and open this file again see that update came to Windows this is pretty cool and I'm gonna do something else here you know another update on Windows save this go back to uh, Linux do the cat again and as you can tell it's the it's missing a line but if you put some more new lines here it'll be easier to read here you go another update from Windows this is this is all you need to do to share the folder it's it's super cool um, that it's it's this easy now one thing i i did want to try is can you use the ln command in a to create a symbolic link to some other file from linux in, into windows unfortunately as of now virtualbox does not support that um, if your host machine is windows that doesn't work but if you uh if your host machine is linux and maybe even Mac might work as long as ln command works inside your host machine it should also work here but if I try to do something like like this let's say I want to link my you know create a symbolic link for um, um, the SSH folder this is gonna say some kind of error message protocol error or some something else so it doesn't work uh, in this case uh, it's unfortunate because i did want to edit some stuff in windows but we're gonna cheat we're gonna actually do the same thing except uh, we're gonna we're just gonna, we're just gonna copy over the configs to share the folder edit them in windows and then copy them back so let me show you so let's say you want to copy um you know the ssh config file so let's see it into um ssh so we have ssh config file we want to copy that into uh, the shared folder and then uh, see it, it came here now and then let's say let's say we want to update this in notepad and one thing I do, I do want to update is actually allowing so as you can see in some cases this is Ubuntu 19 we have in some cases uh, this is turned off by default password authentication for SSH is turned off uh, in this case it's turned on which is good uh, I want to use that to log in into SSH uh, so if I wanted to change something it would be here um, and then you could change something and then copy it back to the destination on, on Linux. So one thing we are gonna do in our next video is actually this. This is the method we're gonna use to create a networking, what's called net plan in Linux, uh, to to make our IP address static. So if, we, if as you can tell. By the way, if config by default is not even installed, um, 
and we're gonna do that in that in that next video which is gonna be about configuring networking inside Linux so that it actually holds a static IP which will allow you to more easily connect via SSH um, to your VMs and make sure that the IP doesn't change because it, once you configure that IP you don't want it to change every time because by default it's actually a DHCP and if you Google ping Google now you should get a response because internet is working inside your VM it just the IP might be dynamic so um, so we're gonna change that in the ne next video but for this video this is how you copy files or share folders and then you, if you want to modify something inside your windows you can copy over to the shared folder modify it in windows and move it back and again uh, for something small it's okay to use uh, a linux command line to modify but if you're changing a lot of stuff i find it easier to just use notepad or something in windows again i'm not a linux guy i'm sorry i'm i don't like still doing stuff in command line as much unless i have to so um that's gonna be our next video and again this video is part of the playlist which i'm also calling a mini course for um creating an environment a development environment for either individuals the developers or teams let's say you have a, you're managing a team of developers or you're part of a team of developers um that mini course is gonna teach you how you could use vms to actually set up your environments development environments which will make it a lot easier when you get a new machine when a new member joins the onboarding is going to be much easier when you don't have local admin access on your machine and you want to do a lot of stuff if you have root access on the on the vm you could do all you know all you want without really having uh, admin access on your um local machine which is probably the case in in a lot of the companies and again, VMs make it a lot easier to um, manage, make it consistent across all the developers. Anyway, I'm going to talk a lot more that, about that as part of the, the course I have, the mini course. It's completely free. Uh, all you have to do is, is subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel and you will get the updates uh, as the videos come out. And I'll also have a link uh, updated inside the des description of this video to kind of go to the playlist or the mini course and be updated like that so if you haven't subscribed click on the subscribe button and if you like this video be sure to click on the like button it helps us with the youtube algorithm so that we have more viewers thanks again for watching i'll see you next time